Most developers struggle with JavaScript. And the reason that is, is because they learn JavaScript the wrong way. A lot of times when you go in and you watch a tutorial or you watch a free video here on YouTube, or maybe you look at a blog or even go to a website like Mozilla or Free Code Camp or W3 Schools, a lot of times they start you off with just the basics of like, hey, what's a function, what's a variable? And a lot of times just the syntax, you spend so much time in the syntax, but once you go in and you go through that whole introduction, you kind of don't know how to put things together. So I'm actually tackling this problem and making it very easy for a lot of you guys that have been struggling with JavaScript and learning different frameworks also by actually building projects that you're going to be building on the job. Basically going in and learning all of the fundamentals of how to put things together and at the same time building projects that you're proud of and you're excited to build. So I want to go in and show you guys a couple of the projects that we are building for the Practical View 3 Master Course. Now you might say, Joe, why Vue? Why not React? Why not Angular? Now, the cool thing about Vue.js is that basically Vue.js is the middle ground between React and Angular. And what that does is it basically gives you an understanding of a lot of the core concepts of React and a lot of the core concepts of Angular. So again, these are the top three frameworks that's out here. You have React, you have Vue, and you have Angular. So it doesn't matter where you go in the world, you're probably going to be using one of those threes. Now, because you're learning Vue.js and you're learning the middle ground of it, you're basically learning a lot of the things from React and you're learning a lot of the things from Angular at the same time. So once you go into any of those other two frameworks, you have a solid knowledge of JavaScript and how frameworks actually go in and help us build applications. So let me go in and show you this. Instead of boring you to death and just going in and read you the documentation, just like everybody else does, we're going to go right into it and we're going to start building real projects that you would do on the job. So I'll give you an example here. So this is a register form. This is where someone goes to a website, they register their name, they register their email, they put their passwords, and then from there, they could come in and create an account. So this is one of the projects that we're going to be doing. You're going to learn about validation. So I'll give you an example. If someone comes in and says, Joe, right? Okay is telling you automatically, hey man, you need to have an email, email is required, password must be at least uh, eight characters, right? And you must also agree to the terms. So all of this here is gonna teach you how to work with Vue.js, also too, how to do validation, how to work with forms, and at the same time, how to manage your state locally within that component. And on top of that, we're gonna talk to you about how do you go in and create components so you can go in and have it as a component Component that is reusable throughout the whole website. Again, this is stuff that you see every single day, but now you're going to be able to go in and build it yourself and understand what's happening. So yes, we're not trying to bore you to death with just a bunch of, you know, syntax. I want you to start building and see how all of these things are working together. Again, this is how we're going to go in and tackle this major problem that people have. The next thing that we have right here is going to be a car loan application. So I'm pretty sure you guys have seen this. If you ever tried to look for a car loan online and you wonder how much is this thing going to cost me and especially with the interest rate. So I'll give you an example. Let's say someone has a car that they're interested in and it's maybe $60,000. They have a $5,000 down payment and maybe their interest rate is let's say 4.5 and the term is actually 60 months. So in here, we're going to have a dashboard, right? That's going to basically break this down with this chart for somebody. You basically paying $55,000. And then from there, you're paying around $6,521 in interest. Now you can actually see here how everything is going to go depending on how much you're paying. So again, you have from month one all the way to month 60. And you could actually see the difference between the principal paid and then the actual interest paid. And then you have your remaining balance. So again, you start from here. This is how much you owe. And then it starts going down. And you can see that every single time that you're making your payments, your payments are going up 
right? But guess what? You also have the chart here where it tells you on your interest, okay? And from there, you also have an amortization schedule. So you can actually see the full breakdown, not just of, you know, the chart itself, but actually every single payment, how much you're actually paying, what's your principal, how much you're paying in interest, and then your remaining balance. So again, this is a really cool application because it's a real life application that people can go in and use and at the same time you can even add it to your portfolio because this is what you're going to be doing for companies this type of work whenever you're working as a front-end developer you're going to be working with data you're going to be working with multiple types of components with different type of packages and managing the state for this application so this is a great project now the next project that we have right here is going to be a playful project now this is a real cool project because we're going to tackle a lot of different concepts inside of this project and once you learn how to do all of these things you're pretty much ready to go as a front-end developer you're going to learn how to work with apis you're going to learn how to work with single page applications you're going to learn how to work with a router again working with data how to manipulate the data how to manipulate the dom so it could actually display exactly what you need to show to the user and react depending on how the data that's coming in so let me go and show you guys this project and again i know you guys have seen something similar similar to this, but not at this level. Everybody that you have seen either on YouTube or in other courses, they create a very simple Pokedex, right? Which is basically like the easiest way for someone who doesn't have no knowledge with working with APIs. But like I said, we're taking this to a higher level. A lot of times I criticize different projects that people create, like a little JavaScript snake game, a little JavaScript memory game. And I criticize it not because it's a game or because it's something playful, it's the feature that it comes with. If you go in and you build something that's very simple and you're not actually demonstrating your skills as a developer, that's where the problem is. So a project like this, you might say, well, it's a Pokemon project. Joe, is this actually good? Can I add this to my portfolio? And the answer is yes. You know why? Because there's so many features in here with this application. Not only the user interface looks really good, but then on top of that, everything in here is functional. So I'll give you a great example. Let's say someone wants to go in and sort through the data, right? Forget that it's Pokemon, but any type of data, they could come in and actually search by text. So someone might say, well, I want to see Mew, right? And that's number, let's say 151. Now I could also go in and search by the ID. So it could be 150. That's Mewtwo. Now from there, you also have a way for you to actually keep track of which Pokemons you have seen recently. So you're keeping track of the state and what's happening on the user's data. So again, they could also have the information there. And again, I could just come back to the previous Pokemons. Now, on top of that, you can also sort the data depending on the, you know, the ID that the Pokemon is on. So someone could say, hey, I want to go to the next one, which is 151, 152, right? 153 and so on and so on. And they could also go back the same way. On top of that, we have information in here of what type of Pokemon that is. So yes, every single thing is being re-rendered on the page. You also have more information about the Pokemon, height, weight, abilities, right? What's the breeding? What's the likelihood of gender, male, female, right? You also have things like this, where you have the stats of each Pokemon, right? Um, you also have information about their defenses. So again, we're sorting the data in here for showing where they weak at, where they're, you know, normal and what they're resistant on. So you can see from the red to the normal damages to the green ones, which are more resistant. What are the Pokemon, you know, attacks that they usually start with? What's their evolutions? So not only see what they're connected to, but all the other uh, Pokemons that they are basically going to be able to evolve to. From there, they can actually go in and click in there and it will take them directly to that specific Pokemon. So again, there's a lot of cool things that's happening in here to make sure that this is a solid project and at the same time it's a fun project so you're not being bored to death and building something that you're like I'm not even excited about this I don't even know what I'm building 
hey, why are we going through this whole documentation and learning a bunch of stuff? Like, what can I build with this thing? And I think the most important part of all of these projects that we're building is that you're learning gradually. So everything that you're learning is going to help you for the next project that you're going to be building. And you don't feel overwhelmed or lost about JavaScript and using a framework and seeing so many different moving pieces is like, we're making it very easy. And every single time that we add something new that you never seen before, we take our time to explain it and show you guys, Hey, this is the reason why we're doing this. This is why this thing is being used here. This is why this is re-rendering the page. So that way you could really learn the skill of actually working with a framework and make your life much easier as a JavaScript developer. So guys, listen, I'm super excited to have you guys inside of this course. Hopefully you guys found some value in here. If you're watching this on YouTube, again, you can always check out the links in the description, codingphase.com, probably some cool discounts in there. So definitely go check it out. But yeah, man, there's also some really good projects that you guys can do for you to go in and start practicing JavaScript and getting to the next level. But again, looking forward to seeing you guys inside of this course. I'll see you guys later. Peace.